Hey everybody, it's Nick Olson, Chupacabra Off-Road. I'm here at Nash Power Sports down here in Central Phoenix. I'm here with Albert Andron. Albert runs the department for customizing side-by-sides, Nash to Customs, he's the head installer. You guys have seen it, you follow us on social. Nash does a lot of amazing custom side-by-sides, mainly Can-Am, is there a Can-Am dealer? They do all types of other brands as well. Honda, Kawasaki, Yamaha, etc. So we're gonna walk you guys through a B2G install, but as we get into that, it's fun to talk about, listen to Albert's perspective. These guys do a lot of custom builds. Sometimes it starts off at, with your idea or yep. vision or theme. Sometimes the customer says, hey, I'm, a, I'm doing an adventure ride, I'm a dooner. Uh, how does it work if a guy wants to get his vehicle customized at Nash? How do you guys deal with it and what, what do you see? Uh, basically, they're gonna go talk to either Colby or Brandon or one of the parts guys. Um, basically, let them know what kind of vision they're wanting and we can take their, their vision and basically trick out whatever they're wanting on their unit, whether it be sand dunes, rock climbing, uh, any all, any all terrain, uh, we can basically build it for you. So so one thing I noticed, you guys sell a lot of SME particle separators, yep. part you guys really like and believe in, audio systems, you guys do some roof racks. Yep. I know the owner, Bill Nash, he likes a lot of big adventure rides, so you add that stuff up very quickly, we're running out of space quickly. Yeah, we run out of space really quickly. Uh, we're very excited to see this new tire rack set up. Um, I think a lot of people are gonna love it just because it's a new look, new design. It uh, looks pre-runnery, and a lot of people down here in Arizona love that with the Baja in California. We're all big fans, so I think it'll be a, a cool product to see. Awesome, guys. So we're gonna take you through the install here. Um, we're gonna start off, we're gonna go ahead and remove the bed, and then we're gonna get into removing the exhaust and installing the new exhaust because you need to get to all of that before we can get to the install, so let's get into it. So Albert's gonna start by taking off the rear quarter panels. You don't have to do that. It's something that he prefers. He does this all day. He thinks having everything out of the way is gonna make it easier and more quick. Um, but most importantly, we need to get the stock bed out of the way. So as you can see, Albert's got both of the rear panels off. Next thing we're gonna do is gonna take the uh, bed off, but to do that, you've got two bolts here from the stock roll cage that you have to pull apart. So to make the job a little bit easier, Albert's gonna loosen up these upper bolts to try to get a little bit of wiggle. It makes it easier to get everything apart. Okay, so Albert's got the bed off here. We're gonna use this stock frame rail. We are going to remove the bolts here and drill it out so we can use a little bit bigger hardware. It's something we felt better about long-term, adding a lot of weight to it. So we're gonna go ahead and use a 5 16 inch drill bit to drill this a little bigger with, and use the included M8 hardware. And of course, we're gonna remove the exhaust and get the new one installed so we've got room to start the install. because it's slotted. So here's the stock M8 hardware. You should be able to put it all the way through if you have your hole drilled big enough. Again, 5 16 It's a little tricky because the stock frame up here is slotted. So just be a little bit careful, take your time, go slow, and that's what it looks like when we're good to go. All right, so next it's time to remove the muffler. We're also gonna have to remove the heat shielding and the header.
quick tip for removing the head pipe, uh, before you actually crack the main bolt loose that's on the turbo, you're gonna wanna crack the O2 sensor nut loose because it tends to be really tight and if you don't have a second uh, set of hands, it's easier to crack the nut loose while it's still mounted to the car. There we go. So guys, don't forget about this. It's a very thin little gasket. Otherwise, when you install the new exhaust, it's not going to seal well. Very easy to miss. Yeah. Okay guys, so one thing that's a little bit of a challenge is on the new exhaust, we're going from a two and a half inch diameter up to a three inch. So you're gonna have to shave this stock bracket down. Okay, so you guys remember the gasket Albert warned us about. He's got a little dab of grease. He's gonna go ahead and reapply it. You had to loosen up the clamp here. I'm gonna help get it into place. You can go ahead and mount it onto the turbo and get it all nice and secure. Yep. I'll hold it. You come over here. Got it? Yep. So we'll just leave it snug for now. Uh -huh. And get this other bracket get everything on. else on you should be able to let go yeah is there a is that a lock washer or no there's a lock nut on the back end of it oh there is okay yeah. yeah i'm not even i'm not even worried about that bracket yeah the one i cut with that sturdy mount right there Thing weighs like 14 pounds. Yeah. All right, guys, a uh, quick tip I recommend doing is most stock cars, you're only going to run your factory O2 sensor. Unless you've got extra sensors where you want to read uh, different measurements. Um, you're going to use this other O2 sensor, but for most people, you're only going to run the stock one. Um, make sure you check this nut because it's going to be hand tight when you get your exhaust. Back this thing off, and I recommend putting at least blue Loctite on here so it can't back off on you. If it does, you're going to be pushing hot air right up into your bed or any plastic nearby, and I don't, I don't think that's a very good idea. So let's do, uh, let's do some Loctite and make sure that thing does not come loose. All right guys, so we're tightening this mount up. Um, before I begun tightening this, I went ahead and secured the main clamp on the turbo and the head pipe. We recommend tightening that first for adjustment purposes and sealing on the gasket. We feel like if you tighten this first, you're not gonna get a proper seal. So tighten this bracket after you tighten the main turbo clamp. Okay, so uh, I'll plug the O2 sensor in and fire it up. So Albert's got the exhaust on. We put our hand around it right before it got going, before it got too warm. He said it's, you'll know if there's any uh, air, uh, if there's a little bit of a leak, so you can check that out real quick before it gets hot. So exhaust is on, fired up, all good to go. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove this bracket. There's four stock carriage bolts. We're gonna go ahead and reuse these. They're gonna get flipped upside down to start the installation of the base plate and begin the process of the B2G install. One thing that's important to note as we get into it, there's a nice bracket, of course, that we were using to go off of. This mounting bracket for the stock exhaust isn't centered on the vehicle. So 
You're gonna see some clips coming up here where we talk about getting everything center because it's important to note that this might look like it's center. It's actually off about a half of an inch. And we'll talk more about that as we get it set up in the line. Those bolts are always the biggest pain in the butt. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so got the plate removed. This is what it's gonna look like. How, this is how we're gonna install or begin the install of the V2G. We're gonna keep all this the same and not touch it. We're using the stock carriage bolts. They were facing down, they're now going to face up. And we're gonna start off here with our base plate. You can see there's some side to side adjustability as well as angle adjustability. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a 13, I'm gonna get it snug where I can still move it. Then we're gonna go ahead and throw the box in, get the box lined up, and then take some measurements and get this where we want it. So we wanna get this snug enough where it'll sit in position, but not can be easily moved because once we do get it where you want, you want to be able to just take the box off and go ahead and get it secured. So I'm going to get it, like I said, about 70% snug where I just barely move it a little because a little bit of this will make a big difference on the box once it's set into place. So using the supplied hardware, we're using carriage bolts that can secure the box here down to the plate. We're gonna go ahead and pop a few of them in and get the box. Lined up in the slots and now, now we can get a better idea of going side to side where we wanna be. Most importantly, we're looking for a similar measurement on either side of where the box is coming close to the frame rail. And then we're gonna double check the angle of it before we go ahead remove this and secure the base plate. So we've got these 13s all snug and secure now that we've got the base plate where we want. Like I said, it's important that you get that centered. As a quick and dirty measurement, you're looking for about six inches from the edge of the plate here to the weld on each side. And that's gonna keep you pretty square. All these cars are a little different. The brackets here, the excuse me, the, um, the braces or the gussets all kind of land in a different spot. But it's most important about getting your box here even side to side, of course, and then straight. So we go to put the frame on and the lid on, everything lines up perfectly. So about ready to install the frame on each side of the frame, you've got an M8 and an M6. You wanna put those into place, but when you see the frame to get it set up, especially if you're doing this by yourself, take those same carriage bolts and go ahead and get a couple of those tied in on the bottom. And once you get the bottom secure, it's easier to get these up into position. But before we drop the bolt in, this will go underneath. You want to try to put yours in? Yeah. Slide it my way a little bit. tip if you're doing it by yourself. Okay, so now it's in place. We're gonna go ahead and take both of the uh, screws on the front here and get them snug, but not all the way locked in. You have a little bit more side to side movement. But from here, we're gonna get these secure and go ahead and install the box and do the carriage bolt from the bottom and make sure that's all lined up. Okay, so we're shipping these with the lid attached to the uh, frame. And this is holding pretty secure, but I recommend someone else hold this for you because now we're going to remove the two carriage bolts we put in place to help us get it set there. We're gonna go ahead and put the plastic tub and inside of the plastic tub, we have a inner plate. We have a carriage bolt we're gonna use. Carriage bolts are gonna go face down. We're gonna go ahead and install all eight of those right now. Thank you. 
Okay, so we got the carriage bolts. We've got to secure all the nuts underneath. There's eight of them total. Carriage bolts face down to have as flush of a surface as possible. The lid should be able to close and hit against the strike pad here in the rear. There's a little bit of a gap from where the lid's going to hit the box. We did that on purpose. It's gonna be somewhat snug, but all the weight's resting on the frame itself, of course. And then we can do some final alignment of the side to side of the lid here once we get the box here all secured. Okay, so now that the box is secured in, you should have a very similar gap between the gap and the, the tub and the frame. Got about one finger here on each side. There's a little bit of movement. Worst case, if you need to do more, you could drill a little bit bigger holes in the plastic tub. Um, what we've seen so far is you don't really need to do that, but each of these vehicles is different. We wanted to uh, engineer some of this movement in general so you can kind of get it set up exactly how it makes you happy. And now we've got the lid on. We had this thing snugged up as we shipped it, but now we want to get it lined up. Uh, we're going to go ahead and add the struts and get things sorted out so we can get this thing square. As you can see, it's a little over to this side. Adding the struts changes a little bit. The tabs here uh, can make a slight movements here, so adjusting these tabs a little bit might be needed. We have some Del run in between here just to keep it opening easily, but ultimately the top of the lid here is going to hit on the strike pad. And you have a nice little bit of a gap, uh, about a quarter of an inch between the lid and the tub. We don't want any weight on the plastic tub itself. All that is handled in the frame itself. So before we do that, we're going to go ahead and add the side struts here for our bracing. We're going to go ahead and secure these uh, M8 and M6 on the front, and then we'll go ahead and work on the final adjustment here, the final setup of the uh, lid itself. All right, so we've got the lid on. We did a little bit of tweaking here. You have a little bit of adjustment of uh, getting these bolts secure. They're gonna shift this way, so they're gonna be firm, so feel free to loosen them up and move it around to get things lined up right here. Now that we're all lined up exactly how we want, it's time to install the struts. The struts are gonna mount with the body up, so facing this direction, otherwise they would rub if they were upside down. Comes with the hardware and the strut package, and then from there we're gonna go ahead and install the fenders and get the tail lights all mounted up. Yeah. Here's how you're going to mount up the brace for your stock roll cage. You need a, a kit which includes one of our 1.875 inch clamps for the center section. Go ahead and lock tight the screws. You can get those started here. So while Albert's getting the rear body panels back on, I'm just getting these firm into place. These are for the tail lights. There's a smaller washer on the outside, a larger washer on the inside, and that allows a lot of up and down adjustment. Same thing in and out. So before we finish the final mount, if you guys are using the stock OEM page, we're gonna go ahead and get your tail lights where you want them, and then kind of fill in your uh, stock roll cage after that. For this one, we're just changing the hardware, but I think it'll be fine. Yeah. So that's a good length for uh, that's a cord. But it's so much nicer just having it out of the way, in my opinion. No, I think you're totally right. You want to get your side secure? 
Uh, yeah, oh, you want me to go ahead and hey, uh, do mine? that first? Okay. I got this. Okay, so last but not least, getting your tail lights installed, getting them adjusted where you want. Like I mentioned, there's a lot of adjustment up and down here. Got over an inch of up and down, and also there's some slot series so you can go in and out. So what I'd recommend if you are running a huge oversized spare tire, 33 or bigger, you might want to go a little bit lower so your tire is not rubbing. Um, and then most importantly, it's about getting it lined up with a nice clean overlap with your roll cage. You can see here with the stock roll cage, we don't have it all the way tightened down. We have some adjustment with our bar, getting those upper screws tight, but you can go in and out. The front of this fender has a little bit of adjustment as well. So this just kind of involves playing around a little bit. You can see I'm all the way out here. I can go in a little bit more. Sliding up or down. So we're gonna go ahead and just play with this, but make sure when you get this side, uh, passenger side, driver side, they're even, get them where you want. So it's gonna take a little fidgeting, but we wanted to build this in because aftermarket roll cages land in some different spots, different than the stock roll cage. Wanna give you this adjustment ability. Uh, we wanted to give you this adjustability so you can get it set up exactly how you want it. Thanks everybody for watching the video. Hopefully this helps you B2G owners get this thing installed, adjusted, dialed, just how you like it. Thanks to Albert, the crew at Nash Power Sports. They're in here in stock, they're local. There's three locations in the Phoenix Valley. So if you don't wanna mess with it, you want these guys who are pros to do it, bring it on by one of their stores. Thanks for watching. Check out more of our products. If you wanna check them out online, chupacabraoffroad.com.